Now, Eric, hang out because I'll this take a is nap. yeah, take a nap. Not Dream of hundreds of beavers. Bruce Perky is not going away because he has to review Knox Goes Away. It is Michael Keaton's latest film. He's also a dire- the director of this movie. This is his second feature directing picture. Knox Goes Away centers on John Knox. He is a hitman played by Michael Keaton. He's trying to make amends with his estranged son played by James Marston because his son made a huge criminal mistake and his son comes back to his dad and, and asks dear old dad, hey, dad, you're you're a criminal. I need to cover up a crime scene since you know how to do it. Can you help me? The problem is dear old dad, again, John Knox, he has dementia and his dementia is escalating. It's so bad that Knox's latest and last hit went south. So not only does Knox have to clean up his own mess from his latest job, he has to clean up his son's criminal mess as well. So two messes for the price of one for Knox. It's actually feels like hundreds, not hundreds of beavers, hundreds of problems, especially since he has dementia. The movie also stars Ray McKinnon, Marsha Gay Harden. It runs 114 minutes and it's only in theaters March 15th. It has sort of a film noir-esque element. Bruce and I, this week, we're going to be doing a quick spoiler discussion of Knox Goes Away that will be exclusive for our Cinemax Patreon members. Bruce, Knox Goes Away, forgettable for you? Were there some merits in this movie? <laughs> I see what you did there. Forgettable. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, well, you know, it's hard to say. Ask me in a month or two if it was forgettable. So here's my, my reaction to this movie is, it starts out with him. He's meeting his partner that he obviously goes on hits with all the time. He talks, you know, he's got this strange relationship with his kid. You kind of get the idea. He's just, he's just a difficult guy. He's not been a great dad. He's just kind of been, I mean, kind of makes sense. You know, he's living this life as a hitman. He's probably (laughs) not the most (laughs) fuzzy, warm person in the world. So, you know, he's going out on this hit, but you know, before that you find out about him having this, what is it? uh, Jakob Kreutzfeld, I think it's called, which weirdly, oddly, I have had a distant relative by marriage who actually got this condition. It's very, very, very rare. And usually don't live very long with it. Like it goes fast. And that's kind of the the, the idea of this. The dementia is going to go, they, what do they say? Weeks. I think they give him weeks. It's sort of uh, like, uh, Bruce, it's sort of like a ticking time bomb trope, like DOA, yeah. right? It. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. DOA, that's a good comparison. The difference with DOA is, is like, oh, you're poisoned. You have this amount of time to live. I'm going to have to find out who poisoned me. I'm going to find out who killed me. Whereas this movie is like, I've only got so long to do stuff and be effective in my life like I used to be, which he's known as kind of like we just saw with the killer, right? If the killer all of a sudden found out he's going to, his abilities are going to degrade immensely within weeks. And I really was interested in that beginning concept. He goes out in the first hit that we see, and immediately you see how things can go sideways with all of a sudden what he's facing and the implications of that. And like, oh my gosh, how is this movie going to go forward? Like, what's going to happen to him? Is this going to be, this could go all kinds of directions. Then his son goes up, shows up, and it goes that direction. And that's where the movie started going downhill for me Mm. because the stakes of that were so low for me. Now I know, oh, it's a family and he's got to reconnect with his son and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, to me, that was a writing that was such a writing kind of a moment in the movie. It was like excuse conveniently for son to just show up now and have just murdered somebody and need dad to help him cover it up. And oh, dang, dad has this condition. I really started falling off board on it at that point. And then it became, unfortunately, instead of being like, oh my gosh, this, this is this tension device, this like, when is it going to hit him and how is it going to affect him? Instead, it became to me the annoying device, like when you have people in characters in movies that have abilities but the abilities are only used when it's convenient for the plot and that's how this kind of works it only is a problem when it's convenient for the plot but yet yet when it can't work for the plot then he is able to know things and there's a whole subplot with a prostitute that he sees every week which i thought was absolutely nothing um yeah this movie unfortunately just fell flat for me yeah also the prostitute is played by joanna kulik from the actress from cold war Cold War and Compromat, it's, I wish she had much more stuff to do in this movie. When you cast Joanna Kulig in your film, obviously we know why Joanna Kulig took this job, chance to work with Michael Keaton. We forgot to mention Al Pacino. Al Pacino plays the boss and pretty much sort of handler for John Knox and Pacino has a small role in this as well. I just feel like Joanna Kulig was 
underutilized. Maybe there were some deleted scenes left on the cutting room floor, but I ended up actually liking it more than you. I thought the sun part, it is a trope. But I was, I just went with this entire movie. I saw this movie. I loved it. I had my mom, my mom watch it. She loved it as well. Love the twisty stuff in this in this movie, and it is a, it is a tropey type of film. We've all seen Bruce, you and I have seen these type of movies before. I right. just sort of went with it and for, the for, logic stuff. Yeah, for me, it wasn't the trope as much; it was the stakes because I thought the stakes were to me kind of non-existent. The stakes were, uh, and I'm not going to say what happens. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but hey, I bet you can guess what happens. <laughs> 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 His son comes with him with a problem, and I bet you can guess what happens. Right. Yeah. So I guess the only we interest solve it is come closer together. I guess the only yeah. interest is <laughs> Hey Eric, that's a spoiler. What are you doing? I'm kidding. I didn't see so the I guess, movie. I can't. So spoil once again, it. I guess the only interest is like how does he get there? And how he gets there is kind of like okay, sure. But and then there's this whole thing with the the police detectives trying to to solve him and that to solve it and figure him out and yeah it, it, no <laughs> it just didn't I, work. I loved I I, I like the police detective and me being Asian. It was nice seeing an Asian American woman in it. That that I know that's has nothing to do it with was. efficacy. Give give them yeah. something to do. Sorry, but, <laughs> I, I right yeah and like Bruce says, I mean in so many words, it has nothing to do. It's great to have minority representation. Has nothing to do with the efficacy of the actual narrative okay these are that's apples and oranges but for me the apples and oranges work together it was a nice fruit cocktail Knox goes away again 114 minutes only in theaters march 15th bruce and i i'm gonna make bruce's life very easy this week we're just gonna spend three or four minutes doing a mini review so that, that'll that be for our patreon mini spoiler stuff just so there's a certain twist in the movie that bruce was saying it's it's well, I don't even know if it's a twist. You might be able to see it. <laughs> I didn't say a hundred miles guess away. What happened? <laughs> what? I didn't say a thing. I guess what happened? Just <laughs> listen to Eric about three minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bruce and I won't won't do any more spoilers for our Patreon Patreon members. Forget about it. No, anyway, quick that quick, be- quick quick question. Yeah. It says Marsha Gay Harden's in it. She yeah. had a big part, or is she just kind of blink and you miss it kind of role. Well, Bruce, should we mention who she? Yeah, we can mention who she is, or is that a kind of a surprise? No, should, should we? Mention I mean, it her? says she's in it. I, yeah, I, she is. I, I just yeah. want to know if it's like a big part or a small. It's part. It's a small part. Okay. Bruce, should we mention who she is? Or doesn't not? doesn't matter. Yeah, she plays his wife. She's his estranged wife. Why should get harder? Yeah, it's a right. it's a one scene in the movie. I think Ray McKinnon. I always liked him as a character actor. He's in the in the beginning part of the movie as well. Some really good stuff in this movie. I don't know. I really enjoyed this Michael Keaton directing. Mm. I haven't seen The Merry Gentleman in years. I need to rewatch that. That was his other directing effort. I thought, Bruce, didn't you like Michael Keaton in this movie? It's sort of not, is it sort of negligible because he's always going to be good in a movie because you like, he's such a good actor? Did you yeah, find him? Yeah, he's he's fine. He's good in the movie, but yeah, it just didn't move the needle. That's the problem. Okay. It's, it's the script that really threw me off. Yeah, he just didn't have enough to do. Okay. Before we get to ratings, I just want one warning regarding Knox Goes Away. If you are thinking when you say crime thriller, if you're thinking of an action-packed crime thriller, you're not going to get it with Knox Goes Away, okay? That's just a little bit of a mini warning. It's more of a character type of piece. That said, I enjoyed Knox Goes Away. Four stars for me. Bruce? Two and a half. Two and a half. How dare you? How two and a half stars from Bruce That's Perky? pretty generous, I think, honestly. And, and, <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, well, look, listeners, most importantly, I'm recommending it. Bruce is not. Tell us which train you're on, okay? 